Here at Center Fun, we're looking at an airplane that we've seen before. We've seen it only in Germany, however. This is a P-51 replica. We're going to talk a little bit more about what those words mean. Uh, but this is the first time it's been seen in this form in the United States, which probably is going to be a large market for this company. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Sebastian Gluck about, well, what are we looking at here, Sebastian? Tell me a little bit about the basic of what you're trying to do with this. Yeah. So. This project actually developed about 11 years ago when uh, the founder of the company, Hans Schwöller, decided to move from RC model aircrafts to real aircrafts. And he made a survey which aircraft is like most famous amongst the Second World War era and by, by far <laughs> topping out the P-51 Mustang was the most appreciated aircraft enthusiasm uh, sparkling up um, from the people. So he started developing that Mustang, but first what he did is his objective was to get it as scale as possible. So at the moment I can think about of 11 different replicas of the Mustang, but none of them were exactly scale replicas. So of course it has advantages but also disadvantages, like coming later on to the engine choice, but yeah, when he started, so he took an original Mustang P51D and made thousands of pictures of that. At that time, the technology was not so fast that you could easily take a 3D scanner and scan ah, the aircraft and <laughs> just transfer it into three-dimensional drawings. So from the pictures, he made two-dimensional drawings and then transferred all the details, all the rivets you see, all these cruise heads you see, even the shop heads of the rivets inside to a mold, a positive mold, and from that one he originated the negative mold, which was the basis to make parts like this. So this looks for all the world, if, if you haven't seen the earlier uh, reports we've done on this, this looks for all the world like a metal airplane. I mean, you can get right, you can, in fact, you can touch it and think it's still metal with rivets in it. It is not. What is it made of? <laughs> so the complete aircraft, including fuselage, cowling, wings, is completely made out of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, the whole thing. The whole thing, yeah. <laughs> so what we did is, we took carbon fiber and uh, put a, a, a sandwich core made of Nomex paper between the layers, and then on top another uh, layer of carbon fiber, and then the imitations of uh, the details like rivets and screws. Now, that was a long iteration process, actually. Uh, I'm because, guessing. Like, from a mold to actually see it now like this, that it, um, appears realistic. It's like how deep have you carved in the molds in order to, to get that appearance. Uh -huh. was a lot of iteration processes. And if you look into detail, like on the screw heads, they are not all pointing in the same direction. So that was about like 16,000 hours of... 16,000 hours to yeah. make the molds? <laughs> yes, exactly. Wow, that's like eight, eight people working for an entire year yeah. just on the mold, not building anything, just exactly. on the mold, well, building the mold, but not yeah. building the airplane at all. And literally, folks, I don't even know if the camera close-ups will show it, but if you look at some of these screws, there's actually a few of the screw heads that are stripped, not stripped, but worn a little bit, like somebody really cranked a bit too hard on it. Yeah. It's a fake, but it's such a good fake that people will go, oh my God, this is a real thing. And until you, until you go, wait a minute, that doesn't, that doesn't really sound aluminum. That, but that's about your only clue. It's, it's a brilliant it job. Is, yes. So the process of building the airplane, that's the, the, I mean, the airframe is the biggest work effort. And the engine, you're, you're just going to install an engine at some point. So you're doing all this and you're working and you're carrying on. And then what happens when you come to the engine? Yeah. So when you develop an aircraft like this, you want to focus. You, and this, and sooner or later, you want to you want to get it in the air. And so the the Rotax engine was the perfect match. And knowing that the 950, it's a little more compact. Than it's the, compact yeah. and it's turbocharged. It has 141 horsepower, and it accelerates that beauty to 150 knots level speed. So Beautiful. that's all you want to have. And the nice thing is on a Rotax engine. You have uh, maintenance uh, uh, intervals of 100 hours where you do an oil change. Now look at a real Mustang P51. Yeah. If you fly one hour, you have 50 hours of maintenance work ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were maintenance uh, hogs, I'll say. They took a lot of it. Okay, so, so you ended up with the uh, Rotax 915 IS, which 
just to continue that story, came along well after the airplane was designed. Yeah. It just happened to be that they made the right engine for your needs. Luckily, luckily. Okay, cool. <laughs> so now we got some airplanes in the country. The work effort is different than you'd think because there's no rivets to put in, there's no screws to put in, because there are not really any screws or rivets. But there's still an effort to get this together, and it's got to be done right. How are you going to handle that with U.S. customers? And I'll also add that you said speeds of 150 and some other things, and it is retractable gear. Uh, so today in the USA, that can't be a, a light sport aircraft. No. Perhaps in a couple of years, I think it probably can be, yeah. but you got to deal with today. Yeah. So how are you going to deal with the building of this airplane today? Because it's an experimental kit today. Yeah. So looking at the U.S. market, we right now focus on basically two registrations here in the U.S. One is the experimental, how much are built glass where the customer would build the aircraft by himself following the 51% rule and the other one is the experimental exhibition class which we want to follow up with our serial number one which you may see in the background with yellow coaling which we will ship in May to the US oh, okay. and want to then deregister it in Lithuania and register it here in the US as an experimental exhibition aircraft. And FAA does allow that because they know these airplanes have to get out, people have to see them. Nobody just buys things sight unseen, well exactly. some people do, but they shouldn't. So they allow at least a certain number of those to come in and for people to get familiar with the process. But how are you going to handle all that here? You, you guys are over in Europe. Yeah, so until we have uh, put in the efforts to have our own entity here in the States, we were looking for a partner who is not only familiar with maintaining and possibly also building aircraft, but Maybe he has some experience with a P-51 Mustang already. <laughs> it, it was quite lucky uh, uh, and a nice coincidence that in the land at the, uh, the Sport Aviation Showcase in November, we met again John Williams from Titan Aircraft and he said, wow, your aircraft is magnificent. This would have been the evolution of my own designs, but I'm too old now. <laughs> but then talks go on and now we finally found an agreement that he will act as a builder assist center for us in the U.S. And I mean, he's already percent. building that one over there, yeah, which is, a, is quite a complex yeah. build, so he clearly knows his way around this stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And he's going to do this then for you. Absolutely. We've been talking almost exclusively about building the airplane and how it was created, but, you know, let's get to the pilot side of it now about how it flies and such. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about, because people want to know, well, how does it perform? It's not an actual P-51, so it doesn't go 300 miles an hour. But tell me a few of the numbers of mm -hmm. its performance. So during flight testing, what we have seen is that we have a stall speed during landing of 47 knots, which is quite low, oh, slow, and yeah. should be handled by the usual tailwheel experienced pilot. Now, uh, maximum level speed, which we were seeing at low level, was 150 knots, and thanks to the turbocharged engine, which gives me the full power up to 15,000 feet, we were still seeing 180 knots in that high altitude. That's as a true, true airspeed. airspeed. True Absolutely. Airspeed, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, the complete aircraft is set up that the cockpit area of front and back seat is like a, a, a safety cell, like in Formula ah, One. Okay. So we have a carbon fiber beam which goes around the, uh, the aircraft and the center wing, which is split here, is attached with three brackets on each side to the fuselage. Now, in order to have more safety, we, we offer two solutions. We either can install a, another backrest that someone is wearing a parachute by himself, or we have a compartment in front of the cockpit behind the firewall, ah. which we use for a ballistic rescue system. Now, the ballistic rescue system has a rocket and a soft pack parachute in it, and lines going through the carbon fiber structure to the back and so the whole aircraft so is held in the proper case, way. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Will come down in one piece. But it, but okay. What the camera can see and what I can see right here, it looks like a single seat in there. But yeah. it is, but it is a two seater. Yeah. Is that right? That's the second seat on the back side. Oh, there just is. a little bit of. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, can see. I just can't. I'm not quite tall enough. That's also okay. So it's always a two seater. It is, okay. and it has a large baggage compartment, at least for light parts like a tent, like a sleeping bag, behind the second seat. Okay. Where you can fill in a lot of different stuff while well, you have to look for your weight and balance. So our Swiss customer, which has just arrived today, he uh, calculated that with full fuel, 220 pounds on the front seat, 220 pounds on the back seat, and 40 pounds of luggage, he's still within Is CG. that right? Okay. So let's uh, shift a little gears a little bit again now to the actual flying of the airplane. What is its control mechanism? Well, what, how is it set up that way, Sebastian? Okay. Um, this aircraft has a center stick 
normal rudder pedals which are attached to the side and are adjustable depending on your leg length. Okay, the seat um, doesn't adjust, the pedals do. Exactly. Okay. And uh, with the seat we still have uh, some, some uh, room for uh, adjustment on the cushion, so we use the uh, normal foam and this what's so called memory foam, so you have a really nice uh, fit in the seat. Um, and it's normal push rods to the back and in the uh, wings okay. to control the ailerons, elevator and rudder. Now, um, when we come to um, um, the installation of that whole thing, we have the possibility in the center wing to install, if someone wants that, an autopilot. Ah, okay. Still, flying it is too much fun, so <laughs> why would you want an autopilot to take over the fun part of it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, so joysticks, yep. front and rear? Front and rear and pedals front and rear. Yep. How about braking? Um, just front. Okay. Pedals. Um, yeah, like toe tip. Okay. Uh, so steer, yeah. direction steering. Okay. Throttle on the left hand side. Hydraulic constant speed prop, which we currently install from MT, with the adjustment on this. Uh, uh, what that called? On the quadrant. Uh, yeah. yeah, in the quadrant. Exactly. Okay. And introduce uh, flaps. Yeah, and flaps on the airplane. How, how do you operate the flaps? Oh, the flaps are uh, electric driven electric. by an electric engine and uh, they're quite huge, which uh, allows us this low landing speed. Ah, yeah, that's how you get down to that 47 knots. Yeah. Okay. How do you operate the landing gear inside the aircraft? The uh, landing gear is uh, driven electric too. Okay. So we have inner door flips, which are currently not installed on this one, which will open. Ah, okay. Then so there's another door down here then. Exactly. Like see. the original one. Okay, yep. Uh -huh. And you can independently operate this one then you can retract electrically uh, the main landing gear and uh, once in it will tension uh, a big metal spring inside an aluminum container so in an emergency case where you have no electricity anymore you can just release a pin and it will spring back down exactly ah, okay that's a clever way to handle it another nice thing is since we were uh, trying to stay with the landing gear quite scale is inside there's a hydraulic damper from off-road vehicles. Ah, okay. Which you don't see from the outside and it doesn't destroy the looks. Excellent. Coming to the fuel system, um, we have main fuel tanks, yeah, each one, side about... One fuel load right here, so... Yeah. Okay. About you got 15 one gallons. Uh, 15 per side? Per side, yeah. 30 in total. Oh, wow, you got a lot of fuel on board there. Yeah, so it's about for like four hours something with reserve uh, of, of flying endurance, but um, as the customer wishes, there can be additional fuel tanks here in the ah, okay. uh, outer wings. Yeah, you do have another fill point right here, so there right. could be extra fuel. Yeah. Last detail, like um, the outer wings to save space or to, to like just transport the aircraft from A to B on a trailer can be split here. It's a setup like on a, on a modern glider, so you would lower the flaps, release a pin, and then you can take the whole wing the outer wings off the yeah. app. But for people that want to follow up on it, hear about where it's going to be built, when some coming in, when they might buy one, or just learn more stuff, where do we send them on the web? Well, just go on our website, uh, get in contact with me, my contact data is on the website, or see us here at Sun and Fun. And what's the website address for us? It's www.scalewings.com. Okay, scalewings.com. I've reported on this aircraft from over in Europe, and we'll continue to keep a focus on it because it's very, very popular with people. You can find all that and lots of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Sebastian Gluck and myself here at Sun and Fun. Thank you, Dan. It was nice meeting you again. <laughs>